أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط المستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في آناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأخشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكرى خشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليهم اثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاغ المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لإن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم ولا مسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم فإن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغن عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينكذون إني إذا لفي ضلال المبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون يأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلق منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالعرجون القديم الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر على الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أن حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشهول وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينكذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها مؤرضين 
فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ قَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنُطْعِمُ مَنْ لَوْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ أَطْعَمَ إِنْ أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالِ الْمُبِينِ وَيَقُولُونَ مَتَى هَذَا الْوَعْدُ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ مَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً تَأْخُذُهُمْ وَهُمْ يَخْصِمُونَ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ تَوْصِيَةً وَلَا إِلَى أَهْلِهِمْ يَرْجِعُونَ وَنُفِقَ فِي الصُّورِ فَإِذَا هُمْ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَنْسِلُونَ قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا مَنْ بَعْثَنَا مِنْ مَرْقَدِنَا هَذَا مَا وَعْدَ الرَّحْمَنِ وَصَدَقَ الْمُرْسَلُونَ إِنْ كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ جَمِيعٌ لَدَيْنَا مُخْبَرُونَ فَالْيَوْمَ لَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَلَا تُجْزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ الْيَوْمَ فِي شُغْلٍ فَاكِهُونَ هُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُهُمْ فِي ظِلَالٍ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ مُتَّكِئُونَ لَهُمْ فِيهَا فَاكِهَةٌ وَلَهُمْ مَا يَدَّعُونَ سَلَامٌ قَوْلًا مِنْ رَبِّ الرَّحِيمِ وَامْتَازُوا الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ أَلَمْ أَعْهَدْ إِلَيْكُمْ يَا بَنِي آدَمَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا الشَّيْطَانَ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ مُبِينٌ وَعَنِيبُ دُونِي هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَأْقِلُونَ هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوعَدُونَ إِصْلَوْهَا الْيَوْمَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يأقلون وما علمناه الشعر ما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين ينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي الإضام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون فلك الله العلي العظيم صلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك وأنت مسدد للصواب بمنك ويقنت أنك أن ترحم الراحمين 
في موضع العفو والرحمة وشد المعاقبين في موضع النكال والنقمة وادم المتجبرين في موضع الكبرياء والعدمة اللهم أذلت لي في دعائك ومسألتك فاسمع يا سميع مدحتي واجب يا رحيم دعوتي واقل يا غفور عثرتي فكم يا إلهي من كربة قد فرجتها وهموم قد كشفتها وعثرة قد أقلت غاغا ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلقة بلاء قد فككتها الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الظل وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا مضاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في أمره الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عظمته الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمره وحمده الظاهر بالكرم مجده الباسط بالجود يده الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده كثرة العطاء إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز الوهاب اللهم إني أسألك قليلا من كثير مع حاجة بي إليه عظيما وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير اللهم إنا عفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي وسفحك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيح عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطئي وعمدي أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك فصرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قسنت فيه إليك فإن أبطى عني عتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبطى عني هو خير لي لعلمك بعاقبة الأمور فلم أرى مولانا كريما أصبر على عبد اللئيم منك علي يا ربي إنك تدعوني فأولي عنك وتتحبب إلي فتبغض إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي تطول عليك فلم يمنعك ذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إلي والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجري الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإصباح 
ദയ്യാനിദ്ദീൻ റബ്ബിൽ ആലമീൻ ഫാലിക്ക ഫലിയോ <laughs> قهر بعزته الأعزاء وتواضع لعدمته العدماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصي ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة هنيئة قد عفاني وعظيمة مخوفتين قد كفاني وبهجة مونقة قد راني فوتني عليه حامدا وذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يهتك حجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد سائله ولا يخيب آمله الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينج الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويدع المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبح في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء وَيُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى وَيُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى وَهُوَ حَيُّ لَا يَمُوتُ بِيَدِهِ الْخَيْرُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنما وطيب وطهر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسولك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك 
اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم وصل على الشديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة النساء العالمين وصل على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائما اللهم وصل على ولي أمرك القائم المؤمل والعدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين ويده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعله الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبل مكن له دينه الذي ارتضيت أبدله من بعد خوفه أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم أعزه وأعزز به وانصره وانتصر به وانصره نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم اظهر بي دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخالق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم الموم به شعثنا وشعب به صدعنا وارتق به فتقنا وكثر به قلتنا وأعزز به ذلتنا واغن به عائلنا واقض به عن مغرمنا وجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عسرنا وبيض به وجوهنا وفك به أسرنا وانجح به طلبتنا وانجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا واعتنا به سؤلنا وبلغ نبيه من الدنيا والآخرة آمالنا واعتنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسؤولين وأوسع المعطين اشف به صدورنا وذهب به غيظ قلوبنا واهدنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إلى آه الحق آمين 
اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا سلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآله وأعنا على ذلك بفتح منك تعجله وبذر تكشفه ونسر تعزه وسلطان حق تظهره ورحمة منك تجللناها وعافية منك تلبسناها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الفاتحة السلام والتحيه والاكرام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب نفوسنا ابي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المضمونين الهداه المهديين الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهر فتحه كرا واللعنة الدائمة الباقية على أعدائهم أعداء الله أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن كيد الشيطان كان ضعيفا إكسلبات بني محمد وآله محمد <تصفيق> ومنين continuously we are discussing about the topic of plots and deceptions of shaitan Today is the birthday of our second Imam, Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam. Inshallah, during our uh, lecture, I would like to reflect upon the life of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam as well. But inshallah, first of all, we continue our uh, subject. Uh, we learned that uh, there are many plots of shaitan. We have to have awareness from them. So we could protect ourselves from his evils. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave assurance to us. Inna kaida shaitani kana da'ifa. As far as you show resistance, of course, there will be protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why, you know, when people, they ask question, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could left us between shayateen. So the answer to this question is very much simple. It's upon us. Do we consider shayateen to be our awliya, friends, and those who have authority upon us, or we accept the authority of Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's why 
According to the verses of Quran, we understand that those who seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against enemies of Allah within humanities or from jinnat, Allah gives protection to them by sending angels, even by sending angels. So, I mean, Allah never ever he leave his servant to be alone. He is always he is a protector. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient. And he is the best who can represent and protect the humanity and his servants, especially. <laughs> Today, I would like to discuss about one of his plots, which is known to be anger. Anger. You know, Mumini, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us the power of anger. Anger is good if it's used in positive way. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave such feeling of anger to us? Because sometimes people make oppressions on others. So anger, if man becomes anger, he is capable, of course, his different system triggers and he is capable to remove oppressor from oppressed one. So anger is a power which gives us strength physically and mentally if it's uh, uh, used appropriately against those who are evil. The nature of evils, for example. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he himself he becomes anger in Quran and Majid. He says, min Allah. They earn the wrath and anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they deny the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they receive wrath of Allah. Because they kill prophets alayhi wa salatu wa salam. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his wrath, anger upon him. He also uh, categorically explained about uh, some other groups as well. He says, He punishes hypocrites, men and women. He punishes mushrikeen and mushrikat. So, so those who always have evil assumptions towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, munafiqeen and munafiqat, mushrikeen and mushrikat. Alayhim da'iratu so their false assumptions returns to them, back to them. وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ And Allah sent His wrath, anger upon those people who are munafiqin, munafiqat, mushrikin and mushrikat. So this is second category upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows His anger. The third category is those people who kill innocent mu'mineen. Those who kill a mu'min, muta'ammidan, without any reasoning, not in qisas, muta'ammidan, fajaza'uhu jahannam, his punishment is jahannam. Wa ghadib Allahu alayhi wa la'anahu. And a ghadib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon such person. So Allah, he sent his wrath. So those places in which anger is permissible, we have to show. You know, in battlefield, if you are going with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ahl bayt alaihi wasallam, wasallam, of course, without anger, you cannot defeat your enemy. So there are appropriate places from which we have to uh, consider, consider and use this power of anger. Otherwise, having patience in front of, like for example, family members. And uh, 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 like, for example, wife, children, parents, you know, friends, they do mistakes. So we have to have control upon our anger when we face our family members and friends. Salaam, <laughs> Muhammad, wa Ali Muhammad. And this is sign of mu'mineen. That's why Allah says in Quran, Majid, "Uidat lil muttaqin." Jannah is created for muttaqin. Uidat lil muttaqin. You know, Allah made Jannats. He established Jannat for Muttaqeen. Alladheena yunfiquna fis sarra'i wal darra'a. Muttaqeen are, who, who are Muttaqeen? Alladheena yunfiquna fis sarra'i wal darra'a. Those who give charity in hardship and easy time. Fis sarra'i wal darra'a. Wal kaazimeen al ghayd. And those who control their anger. Wal aafina anil nas. And they forgive others. Mu'mineen. Allah yuhibbul muhsinin and Allah loves those who are doer of good. So uh, we can understand from this verse, Allah 
he established jannah for those people who are kadimin al ghayb have control upon their anger wala afina anin nas how they control the anger this basically <laughs> forgive others likewise he admires in another verses of quran he says wal ladina yajtanibuna kaba'ir al ithm among mu'minin there are people who uh, refrain themselves from major sins major sins wal fawahisha and from indecency wa idha ma ghadabu hum yafrun and whenever they become angry they forgive others sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad wa ali muhammad you know there are a lot of problems inshallah we will discuss sometimes you know people uh, their life gets changed you know from positivity to negativity just because on, of not having con- control on their anger so women I mean, in if we want to categorize people there are three types of people there are certain group of people who never ever become angry you know if if you put oppression upon them they are very much calm you know they are calm they say you know we are doing sabr this is not sabr if they become they choose to be oppressed and such type of people they do not stand with oppressed one and ayma tahrin alayhi salatu wasalam they taught us kuna lil zalim khasma wa lil mazlum auna you have to stand in front of the zalim and you have to be protector of oppressed mazlum so there are certain people who say no we are not going to for example uh, uh, say anything they become oppressed oppressed and they keep quiet while seeing others to be oppressed you know like for example there are good countries we find zalim we find mazlum so we have to say this is zalim you should stop your zalim and on the other side we have to help mazlumin so this is this is one of our responsibility so this type of group they are in in zalam a yeah, dark situation this is not recommended in ilm al akhlaq so if someone like for example he is not helping oppress so of course he should uh, you know help him and if he himself is oppressed of course he should fight even though through the uh, means of anger and power against the one who is zalim salli ala muhammad wa ali <coughs> the other group of people are those who always in the situation of anger you know if you if you, if you joke make joke with them you know you want to have uh, communication with them they become angry you know you cannot even suggest to them anything even if they are wrong they know they are wrong but they are not capable they, they are not willing to uh, receive the guidance so the, this this type of people they are close to insanity junoon so this such a such type of anger they ruin their life they ruin their uh, career they ruin everything in their life because of the anger so this type of group of people all of both of them they are not correct being oppressed or being always angry it is not accepted in the religion of islam the third group of people are those people who have control on the anger they show anger on the places which are permissible they show anger to enemies of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enemies of ahl bayt alayhi wassalatu wassalam <coughs> not to the lovers of ahl bayt alayhi salatu wasalam so this type of group is you know appreciated you know their character is appreciated now the reasons of uh, anger why we become angry sometimes people who are jealous they become angry you know they see ni'mats fulan you know family member in my la- in, in in my society so and so you know they have status i don't have such status so i want them to lose whatever they have so as far as i am jealous that man is going to be angry because jealousy becomes anger the other reason of jealous uh, being angry momin is ujb 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 is what you know uh, feeling superiority you know there are people spiritual people who work hard who fulfill all wajibat and refrain themselves from muharramat so they get ujb ujb is like takabbur sometime you know in takabbur takabbur man compare himself from others but in ujb uh, a man feel uh, generally feeling he has feeling of superiority he compares or not compares with others doesn't matter in ujb he feels always superior so if we have this feeling of superiority because of our education because of our spirituality whatsoever the kamalat which we have 
certain type of people also they have anger in their life because they feel superior than others so that's why they don't want to have any kind of advice from others and even they do not have tolerance in their life that's why they become angry sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad wa alihi wasallam ta mumin what are the harms you know we do, if we don't can control anger there is another guna which comes after it which is insulting others those people who are angry they insult others swearing at others you know this is this is haram in the religion of god when man is ang angry he starts swearing on others Ex <coughs> exposing secrets of others this is another sin sin which comes uh, frequently after anger harming others you know you know people they start fighting with each other physically they get physical and so on sometime anger ends up to the killing you know people they kill each other because of the anger not having control upon anger and likewise people enter into the battles because of uncontrolled anger a lot of the battles you know someone became angry insulted another community members or another country so in return they show resistance and you know fight begins so there are a lot of battle in history if we go and analyze they started only because of the anger so that's why mumin according to the narrations of aimma tahrin alayhi salatu wasalam <coughs> we have to be very much aware about of this anger you know i have seen families you know a lot of families they go up to the uh, talaq why because they don't have control on upon their tongue or on anger they say whatever it comes to their mind they are emotionals we have to have of course allah subhanahu wa taala gave us emotion emotion of love emotion of anger but of course if we control certain things at certain stage you know we can avoid disasters in our life imam ali alayhi salatu wasalam <coughs> now our our topic is plots of shaitan deceptions of shaitan so imam ali what he says وحذر الغضب be aware be careful about غضب and anger فإنه جند عظيم because anger is itself جند جند من what مؤمنين army جند عظيم وعليك السلام anger is جند عظيم great army من جنود الشيطان from the armies of شيطان so this is one anger is not one plot it is all army of shaitan from the armies of shaitan so we have to be very much careful wa hadhar al ghadab fa indahu jundum azim min junud al shayat in another narration our sixth imam he says al ghadab miftah kull shar for every evil the key to that evil is a ghadab and anger like i said you know people they insult this where each other they kill you know they, they create harm to others all of these bad habit comes after the qadab and that's why imam baqir he says inna ar-rajula la yaghdabu fa yaqtulu an-nafsa allati harrama Allah wa yaqdhifu al-muhsana if man is anger he can kill others you know this anger could lead to the killing of others wa yaqdhifu al-muhsana and you know people they accuse modest women muhsana mean those who have respect in society we don't have uh, control on anger so of course we accuse the modesty and we challenge the modesty of mu'minin and mu'minat in our society sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad wa alihi wasallam prophet he says al ghadab yufsidu al iman ghadab destroys your iman kama yufsidu al khal al asad al asal like vinegar spoils a honey imam sadiq he says man lam yamlik ghadabahu lam yakun yamlik aqla the man who has no control upon his anger he has no control upon his intellectual aql because aql ghadab destroys aql that's why in another narration imam ali he says al hiddatu dharb min al junoon anger is somehow some form of insanity and junoon diwanagi hai 
الحدته ضرب من الجنون لان صاحبها يندم why this is junoon anger is junoon because when man becomes calm he always regret what he has done in the position of anger is this the reality is it you know when calm we get calm you know husband and wife two brothers you know one of them <laughs> they uh, uh, they regret they say you know uh, they come and they say you know i, I spoke a lot uh, it was not appropriate so just i am sorry So that's why Imam he says this is junoon لأن صاحبها يندم because there is a ندامت regret after غضب فإن لم يندم فنجنوبه فجنونه مستحكم but sometimes people they do not regret so Imam عليه الصلاة والسلام he says for certain people these kind of people are of course they are مجنون in reality صلى الله عليه وسلم Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he says al ghadab jamratun min ash shaitan ghadab is stone stone of fire from shaitan and that's why one day rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he was passing through a group of people you know youths and young people mu'minin were all together You know, they they were looking to a young man who uh, were uh, starting to pull the huge heavy stone you know this that stone had the name of stone of champions for example you know whoever pulls pulls that uh, stone that man is champion <coughs> so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he get close to him and he said uh, what is what happening here So they reply, you know, they, 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 uh, we are lifting this this uh, heavy stone, and uh, we are looking who is more most strong, a strong man between us. So Rasulullah said, okay, this is fine, you know, this is a form of exercise. It's appreciated in the religion of Islam. But Imam Ali said, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, do you want me to say who is most strong among you? So Ashab they replied, yes, ya Rasulullah. So Rasulullah. told rajulun sabahu rajulun fahaluma anhu faghalaba faghalaba nafsa among you is most strong man is who when he faces another person who is cursing him sabahu cursing him swearing at him fahaluma he controls his anger faghalaba nafsahu he destroys his nafs waghalaba shaytanahu wa shaytana sahibe and he defeats his shaitan because whenever there is anger there is shaitan and the one who provoked him he also defeat his shaitan as well so if someone comes to me and start cursing me so of course with him is one shaitan and of course there will be another shaitan to make me angry and that man is also in the custody of shaitan right now so if i calm myself by not becoming angry so i defeat my shaitan and his shaitan as well so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says such type of mu'min who is capable uh, to control his anger while he being accused this man is most in- strong among you sallallahu alaihi muhammad wa ali muhammad <laughs> and even you know in certain stages anger for uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was salam was also not appropriate you know hazrat ibrahim uh, hazrat nuh alaihi salatu wasallam he called his nation towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for years for years and when he became tired he said to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the position of anger in the position of pain he said rabbi la tadhar ala ard min al kafirin dayara oh my lord do not leave any one on earth from kuffar so this is uh, the curse of hazrat nuh alaihi salatu wasalam for his nation so what happened allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent tufan nuh and everyone was destroyed except those people who came with him on ship his ship so what happened one day hazrat nuh alaihi salatu wasalam he saw shaitan shaitan said uh, you did a good favor to me only So Hazrat Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was very much surprised. He said, you know, how as being prophet I did favor to shaitan. This is not a positive thing. 
So he asked, uh, what was the favor? He said, you curse, uh, you ask Adab for your nation and your nation, all of them they died in Tufan and Nuh. So of course, I am in ease. I don't have hardship right now to whisper, you know, all of them, they are dead. So my work is less right now. So I have to make less effort for the people who remain with you. So because you did this favor to me, so Shaitan now he's saying, I want to do nasiha to do you, O Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam. I want to make some suggestions to you. So what are the suggestions? He said, remember me in certain stages. You do not have to forgive Shaitan, O Nuh, in three stages. What are two, uh, uh, three stages? He says, Udhukurni idha ghadib. Whenever you become angry, remember me, I am there behind you. This is first position. So with anger, always shaitan is there. Udhukurni idha hakam Remember me while you are going to judge two parties in societies, two people in your family, two friends. If you want to judge them, so you have to be very much careful. I am going to be there. And the third place, he said, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, to remember him, to be aware of him, is, When you are alone with the na-mahram, there is no one with you. So of course, you have to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the place, the third man is going to be me, and I'm going to whisper at that place. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. <laughs> Now, what is the solution, Mumineen, for anger? Of course, when people, they become angry, you know, their heart beat uh, rise. If they have blood, problem of blood pressure, blood pressure increases. Of course, this happens with anger. So, Imam Bakr, alayhi salatu wasalam, he gave a solution. rajulin ala qawmin wa huwa qaimun faliyajlis min fawrihi. If some of you became angry while you are standing, just sit down. It will make you to be calm. فَإِنَّهُ سَيَّذْهَبُ عَنْهُ رِزُّ الشَّيْطَانِ رِزُّ الشَّيْطَانِ Evil of shaitan will go away. So if I'm like for example standing and fight with someone. So at that point, if I want to calm myself, the solution is to sit down. So رِزُّ shaitan is will go away. وَأَيُّمَا رَجُلٍ غَضِبَ عَلَىٰ ذِي رَحِمٍ فَلَيَدْنُ مِنْهُ فَلْيَمَسَّهُ فَإِنَّ الرَّحِمَ إِذَا مُسَّتْ سَكَنَتْ But if the anger is with family members, you know, two brothers are fighting with each other. You know, brother and sisters, they are fighting with each other. Those who are mahram to each other, rahim to each other, you know, blood relations. So Imam, he says, if you are angry with someone who is in your blood relation, Get close to him, shake his hand, like for example, hug him. So of course, this will calm your anger. anger. You know, those who are in blood relations, when they become angry with each other, when they touch each other, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide them sakina and sukoon and they come out in the position of anger. <laughs> And Mu'mineen, Aymah Tahirin alayhi wa salatu wasalam, their life is exemplary life for us. Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, he had a lot of servants who did not listen to him. You know, one day, Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, he called his servant. You know, servant, Ulam is there to service, serve, uh, uh, provide his service to you 24-7. Even you do not pay your Ulam, you know, at, 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 the, at the time of uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the culture and, you know, the establishment of... <coughs> Slave. So Imam Ali called him, you know, with his name. He just ignored. So Imam Ali, when he came out, you know, he was in Sahan. Imam was in room. You know, I shouted and I call you. Why you ignore my voice? And I understand that you are capable to listen. I'm not too far from you. So he simply replied that, Oh Ali ibn Abi Talib, I feel security from your anger. I feel security from your punishment. Now, of course, this is misuse of Mola Karam of Mola Ali ibn Abi Talib So I know your anger is always with Kufar in battlefield. You kill there, but when you come to home, you are most humble person. 
and this is mu'minin jami' al-adad those people who are warrior when they come to home of course they are warrior at home as well you know they make every place to look like battlefield so those uh, but ali ibn abi talib alayhi salatu wasalam aimma tahrin alayhi salatu wasalam they uh, told us you know battlefield is different you have to show anger on the enemies of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you are when you are with mu'minin <laughs> of course you have to be respectful with them you have to have control on your anger you have to show hilm so he said oh ali ibn abi talib because i feel security from your anger that's why i just ignore you know if i don't reply imam will say nothing so imam ali you know of course this is this this type of reply is also some kind of arrogance so imam ali alayhi salatu wasalam he smiled and he said alhamdulillah alladhi ja'alani mimman ya'manuhu khalqu I pray I all praises are to uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made me among those from whom their servants feel security their servants feel security imle fa anta hurrun li wajhillah go away i have freed you in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salli ala muhammad wa ali <coughs> likewise mummy when we have power for example you know youths mashallah those who go to uh, weight lifting and we get strength power okay so sometime if someone like for example driving if he says anything to me so i feel because i am strong i feel responsibility to reply him okay to react on any kind of reaction against me so this this is what happened those people who go to gym and you know build themselves you know, they want to defend themselves if someone slap once to the, they want to slap twice but i met tahrin alayhi salatu wasalam he said uh, you know uh, they, they 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 showed us practically how to control it imam ali alayhi salatu wasalam <coughs> at the time of his khilafa he saw a lady who was crying in a bazaar shopping center so he came close to that lady and asked uh, why you are crying she said you know i am servant i am kaniz i bought this dates khurma for my master and he wants me to return this and the seller in the shop is not accepting because he said i sold you i took money that's fine i'm not going to return and your money back <coughs> so imam ali alayhi salatu wasalam he took that lady mumina and went to the seller and said you know look this this lady is servant he has nothing this money is not belong to him if she goes back without money so of course his master her master is going to punish her so it's appropriate for you to give back the amount and take your dates you know there is uh, n- 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 nothing happened there is nothing changed in your dates you can take it back so according to history that man you know he he was like for example powerful had strength he threw the punch upon the chest of aminul mu'minin ali ibn abi talib alayhi salam of course this is mistake so imam ali ibn abi talib is asadullah al ghalib you know no one can stand in front of him you know people always they used to run away in the battle whom so ever came in front of ali ibn abi talib he died definitely except one case amr amr ibn as who took out his clothes in the battle of safin sallallahu alaihi muhammad wa ali muhammad <laughs> so people they gather you know they say you know uh, you did punch uh, through through one punch This man is not a gentle man. He is Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. When he realized, he went on the feet of Imam and he asked for pardon and excuse. So Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam he said, "I have nothing to do with you. I am not going to take any kind of revenge." Now you can realize, you know, if I have such power, Khalifa al-Muslimin, you know, if someone throw punch upon me, am I going to forgive him? of course people take a lot of revenge you know people they kill in the reply they put such person into the jail so imam ali alayhi salatu wasalam he said adil imam ali is just he said i am going to do nothing with you just with a condition that when you sell things so you have to maintain the measures of islamic teaching while you are selling and buying things within this shopping place sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad wa ali Likewise, Imam is from the life of Imam Hasan alayhi salatu wasalam. We gather here to on this day 
Biladat day of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam Hassan, you know, he was given this name of Hassan by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His other title was Sayyid, Sibt and Tayyib. One of the major things, you know, which we learn from the life of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, control on anger. Having a helm. This is what we learned. That's why I wanted to connect our topic with Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. At the time of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, in his time, a man came from Sham, <coughs> where Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan for a long period of time, he asked people to curse Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam and his progeny. And it was continued for certain years, 60, 70 years, according to the narrations, according to historians. They curse Abu Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, likewise Imam Hassan and Imam Ali, Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. They used to say Lan not in general meetings, in Namaz Jumu'ah and in their lectures of akhlaq. So this Shami man, when he came to see Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam in Medina, just, you know, straight after approaching to him, you know, there was a beginning communication when he realized that this is son of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam, he started cursing Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, although he is in Medina, not in Sham. Because he had habit, he said, Laan upon Ali ibn Abi Talib, na'udhu, na'udhu billah. And likewise, Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, I mean, if someone comes and says something to me, so people, they are capable to calm themselves. But you know, the red line for us are our parents. You know, in a in, in lot of disputes, when we see, you know, uh, people, they get physical. Why? When you ask them, you know, uh, the reply is, you, the, 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 this man cursed my parents. So I, I'm not capable to tolerate. So Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, uh, if you curse my uh, father, I know uh, you don't know about my father Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wasalam. If you don't have, oh man, food, I'm going to provide you food. If you don't have clothes, I'm going to provide you clothes. If you don't have a shelter, a house, I'm going to provide you shelter and a house. So I mean, this, 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 this habit and this attitude of Imam, we have to practice this in our life. If someone is in aggression and he's accusing me, if we become calm, sometimes people, they change. So this is what happened. Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, he did not become angry. He controlled his ghadab. And although according to the narrations, uh, we understand that those who, are, who curse Aimeh Tahirin alayhi salatu wasalam, there is highly, highly high punishment for them. You know, in Islamic countries, there is highly, highly punishment for them. Those who do lan upon Ahle Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam, for example, but Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, although having control, he is in his area in Medina Munawwara. But Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, I forgive you because I know you came from Sham and your brain is washed. When he saw such attitude from Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, he became lover of Imam instead of being enemy of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> Our Mawla, Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, he is the one, Rasulullah, he introduced him in his life. Al-Hassan wa al-Hussain, Sayyida Shabab Ahl al-Jannah. They are Sayyid, master of the youths in Jannah. Al-Hassan wa al-Hussain, both of them. You know, sometimes people, they uh, emphasize on Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam, but both of them, Hassan and Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam, both of them, they are master for the youths of paradise. And of course, on the day of judgment, everyone will enter into Jannah while being Jawan and youths. And Rasulullah said about both of them, Al-Hasan wa Al-Husayn, Imaman, they are two Imam of us. Qama or Qaada. If uh, they make sulh or if they fight, no matter. One is going to fight Imam Hassan, Hussain al salatu wasalam. And one is going to make peace treaty with Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, Sulhanama. So, of course, different characters, but both of them, you do not have to misjudge Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam. Because there were many followers of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam who made accusations, na'udhu billah, upon Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam because he wrote a priest uh, uh, treaty, Sulhanama with Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. 
and they used to call na'udhu billah na'udhu billah imam hasan alayhi salatu wasalam ya mudhill al-mu'mineen oh the one who created this respect to mu'mineen you know even though when people they started calling him he kept himself calm so this is this is this is attitude of imam alayhi salatu wasalam film of imam alayhi salatu wasalam sabr of imam alayhi salatu wasalam and the second category of his attributes from which we learn a lot is mu'mineen giving charity and especially this month of ramadan is uh, the month of charity the amal which we do prayer fast forgiving others respecting others respecting other uh, elders and those who are younger than us <coughs> and one amal is charity and this imam alayhi salatu wasalam whose birthday we are celebrating today he is the one who was best in giving charities imam alayhi salatu wasalam according to narrations one day he saw a slave you know see the sahaba of ahli bayt alayhi salatu wasalam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us but uh, we can imagine how allah is going to reward when we see the rewards of ahmad tahdin alayhi salatu wasalam so imam alayhi salatu wasalam he saw a slave he is eating in the, in the garden he is having lunch or dinner whatever he was uh, eating he used to take one bread and another he used to give to his dog animal so imam hasan alayhi salatu wasalam asked the servant this man why you are feeding this dog it it was not owned by this 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 slave <coughs> so he said ya ibn rasulillah of course i am human i have heart while i am eating bread this dog is looking at me and of course he is in hunger i can understand his feeling this is the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is makhluq of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now i mean those who say muslims do not have rights of animals they should come and see the character of imam hasan and this slave muslim slave so imam alayhi salatu wasalam he said you are giving to this dog you are feeding your food to this dog why because he says this is the makhluq of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i think a responsibility in front of makhluq of allah to feed him while he is in need so imam alayhi salatu wasalam when he saw this is a ghulam and has such uh generosity that he is giving from his own food and we remember and we understand the slaves they have limited resources so imam alayhi salatu wasalam he went to his master he bought that slave from him and he bought the garden in which he was sitting he came back straight to that slave man and he said to him i for your generosity for feeding animals i freed you for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from now onwards you are free man and this garden is property of you you can do whatever you want salla ala muhammad wa ali muhammad <laughs> so on the act great act of the slave imam alayhi salatu wasalam rewarded to him so now we can imagine how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could reward us on the day of judgment with his blessings if our amal are purified and with ikhlas <coughs> so one day mu'minin another man uh according to the narration imam hasan alayhi salatu wasalam his generosity he bought a garden from a uh, from from a man, from a man you know, and after you know the the, uh, the deal been done after some days imam alayhi salatu wasalam imam hasan he realized that he get, he became bankrupt you know in our time not uh, time we could say such man bankrupt so imam alayhi salatu wasalam bought his garden made the payment now after some days imam was told that that man became bankrupt he has nothing to eat or drink so imam alayhi salatu wasalam straight away he went out and he returned the bag garden which he bought from him and just simply returned and said this is belong to you so he said mola we made a transaction you paid me i am not capable to pay you back imam alayhi salatu wasalam said no you are in need so of course keep this garden back and the money which i gave to you that is belong to so this is about taking care of each other innam al mu'minuna ikhwah mu'minin are ikhwah brothers to each other so when uh, people they saw the generosity of imam hasan alayhi salatu wasalam 
they came, they said, how, oh, Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, how it is possible that you could give everything whatsoever you have in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Rida alayhi salatu wasalam, one day he gave everything related to his livelihood. Likewise, Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, he did plenty of time. So people were surprised, you know, bank balance we keep for our own self, then we give charity. So Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, they gave everything whatever they had. So Imam Hassan, when he was asked, how do you do this? So he said, I have tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This cannot be done by anyone. You know, the tawakkul, the measure of tawakkul, the status of tawakkul which I have, because I see whenever I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives me. This is a habit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever any person is going to ask me, I'm going to respond to his question and give to him. Because when Allah doesn't change his habit of generosity, so of course I'm not going to change my habit of generosity. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. <coughs> That's why, Mumineen, it is highly, highly recommended. If someone comes to you for help, so it is recommended if you can help him, you have to help him. or introduce others. But, you know, insulting the one who is beggar, who is asking for help, it is not the character of Aimeh Tahirin That's why even Aimeh Tahirin whenever they used to give, they used to give with respect. You know, uh, we have narrations that Aimeh Tahirin when they gave money, they used to kiss the hands of needy. They used to kiss hand or forehead of needy. And they used to say, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, I am thankful to you. Marhaban bima yahmilu zadi ila al akhir. I am thankful to you. Thank you. Why? Because you gave me opportunity so I can do good and there is a reward written in my name amal. With this, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strengths and tawfiq to follow the footsteps of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam. <coughs> we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq to follow the teaching of Ahl Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and our marhumeen. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to all women who are ill around the world. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the appearance of Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu wasalam. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Praise Sayyid Surat al-Mubarakat al-Fatiha <coughs> for all marhumeen, especially your marhumeen and the marhumeen of the sponsor of tonight. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين <تصفيق> اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد please side five time أما يجيب all together for شفاء of all مؤمنين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما يجيب المطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 وآخر دعوانا للحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته